It looks like he's not answering. Mm. We're gonna have to start without him then, if he's not gonna answer. Alright, uh, who is the one not answering? Daranak? Violently graceful. Okay, is Daranak here? No, he's not. Okay. He looks like he's offline, legitimately. Mm-hmm. Alright, that's is fine. Is this gonna be a recording, or is this just kind of uh, bullshitting? Uh, I was counting on um, Daranak to record. Does anyone else here know how to record? I'm recording right now. Excellent. Okay. I have three main points. One point. When you're going to go through one, someone's video, you either watch the whole video first or you go point by point. Then you can go back and go sentence by sentence. What you did is the equivalent of taking someone's book, reading the first sentence, and then writing a review about it. Then reading the second sentence, and then writing a review about it. Whoa, and then whoa, by the whoa, whoa, whoa. Gets, whoa. No, let, listen, hold on. You went four hours to talk yes, yesterday. Blaine. Well, give let me four minutes. Let Evil talk. He has to say something. Go we on. did go. We did go point by point. Okay. No, you didn't. So, so, so all right. What, what's the evidence that you have that we didn't? Oh no, no, no! I'm not done with my introduction. You had four hours to talk without me defending myself. Now you can wait a minute. You went. What do you mean? What's the evidence that you didn't? We have the videos. You paused it after the first sentence with that arrogant. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. And then you talked for like 25 minutes. Literally, the first... And then point. what we do, Esplin, what did we do after that? What do you mean, what did you do after that? What did what did we do after pausing Just it? Just tell me what you're saying. What do you think he's saying? Could I you're say saying that you went on speak? after that? Yes, we went on. Didn't you watch Yeah, the, the problem is, is that by the time you got to the end of the point, you were so puffed up that you wouldn't have listened to the point anyway. But um, Esplin, you know, if you watch the entire video, you know that is absolutely completely not true. We went on and talked and talked in great deal about everything else that you said. Okay, whatever. Did, did Let's I, go to I the I first thing. Of- go ahead. Uh, some, something concerning the video that you made, the two videos today in response, or yesterday in response to, or well, actually three days for me ago, to, in response to the um, the whole big video, you said that we didn't go point by point. You said we didn't watch the video, um, and you said uh, that we took you out of uh, context, and we didn't seem to understand the points that you were making. Just quickly, with all due respect, let me let me just say that do, we. I believe, at least I can speak for myself. I did watch the video on my own by myself, made notes before entering the room. Oh, no, no, no. That, I believe you. That's excellent. I was told that at least three of you didn't watch the video. I'm only going by what I was told. Jacob mentioned that at least three of you didn't watch the video. Yes, and Dara- the majority of the people who were in that call watched the video prior to being in that Skype call. Okay. All right, I I never said otherwise. I, I didn't say none of you watched the video. But uh, anyway, you, you, you accused claimed, me specifically you... and the group that we didn't watch the video. And yeah, you accused actually multiple times, Esplin. Okay, well, whatever. I'm not really going to go into that. You no, accused, not whatever. You accused okay. me of framing the argument in Cause my face. Because you fucking did, Esplin. Yes. You you're you're yelling again. Yeah, I'm a grown-up, you're a grown-up, you should be able to handle that, you're an adult. I'm We're not having well, over dude, you. Dude, 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 chill. What? We're right I'm not here. chilling. You don't, you don't have to yell. Okay, alright. Seriously, me. do we have to Relax. discuss the etiquette of simple discussion for... It oh just seems, God, it's just seems if you have serious? rational points, make, make the rational points. Okay, here's the And we will point. honestly fess up if you did anything the- wrong, at least I will. Okay, okay. The argument about the flying spaghetti monster. Basically, what you just did, what you did was the argument from ignorance. You're saying you never heard it put as an argument, therefore that never happened. Do you no, think it's, it's just- not an argument. Yes, it is. No, the it, no it's could not. You, wait, 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 wait. Could you give the argument? If yeah, it is an you. argument, could you give it, please? The argument is referring to when Christians give the basic argument for the necessity of God, and then they make the leap without explaining why that needs to be their god. The flying spaghetti monster, you can literally transpose the flying spaghetti monster part with any mythical entity. How you respond is you say... So, so, you, would, so you would contend 
that um, the way Christians believe, for example, uh, you mentioned that um, you didn't agree with William Lane Craig because he argues that the cause of the universe is personal. Um, you said he just asserts that as a, an attribute of God, and you use the spaghetti monster issue as something similar to say that it's just pointless to do that. Well, I can I can give you a reason why William Lane Craig and I myself also argue that the cause is personal, not simply as a simple bare assertion, but due to argumentation. Would you like that argument? I would like to say something first. Whether you can do that or not is irrelevant. He well, said relevant, that... Let me finish! If you're going to say it's a bare assertion... Say it's a bare assertion oh, for the um, Philosopher. Uh, philosopher. Hold it. on. Hold on. It's not a bad assertion. Can I please finish? Let him finish. Sure. When I made that statement, I was specifically responding to Jacob's misunderstanding of what the spaghetti monster statement is supposed to mean. You guys seem pissed off when I call it an argument. I don't care. I'll call it a statement then. I'm not pissed off. I'm just confused. This yeah, if it's an argument, is... give, us, give us the argument. I'm not, I'm not trying to be an Okay, ass, but... the argument is that the necessity of God thing only leads you to deism. If you can posit that it's Jesus Christ, I can posit that it's the flying spaghetti monster. Okay, okay, um, okay, S1, hold on. First of all, the, uh, the assertion about the Kalam argument being an argument for God does not get you to deism. Deism is a form of theism. Oh, yeah, that's another thing you guys talked about. That's ridiculous. You know what I mean. Esplen, Esplen, I mean you let, you, Esplen, Esplen, you let no, you speak. Let you me let finish. You speak. No, Esplen, let Brandon uh, finish first, the... then you can go. Okay? Go ahead. Thank you. Okay, as I was saying, the uh, the whole thing about the, uh, the you know, talking about the Kalam argument, and you said well, it leads you only to deism. No, deism is a form of theism. Deism is a belief in God, but it is a belief of a type of God. It is a belief that God created the universe and just kind of held back and didn't do anything else with it. It is still a belief in God. So, in other words, it goes under the umbrella of theism. You must pass first through the gate of theism to get to deism. There's a difference between deism and Christianity in believing that God that we believe in being the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. The Kalam cosmological argument posits that it that in the existence of a god, it says absolutely nothing about what kind about which god it is. Are you done? Quite. That is Actually, what I'm saying. Si oh, it, it, for it, the love of God. My apologies, but if I might add something, the flying spaghetti monster thing is a parody of the intelligent designer. Can I? Okay. Can I'm begging you? Can I please finish? Yes, go ahead. Okay. You say it's a parody. Oh, now I have two points to argue. All right, Brandon's point first. That is what the, that is what the argument is saying. I know you're not saying that. The flying spaghetti monster is only to be used as a response when Christians do do that. When they make the argument of the necessity of God and then look at you as if they've just made an argument for Jesus, that is when the flying spaghetti monster comes into play. You don't even have to use the flying spaghetti monster. You can use Islam. You can use Buddha. You can use anything. The point – I know it's not a response to the things you're saying. I never said it was. I was simply explaining to Jacob that you don't use it that way. Could could I could I ask a question for clarification? Certainly. Um, Jacob uh, showed us a video of um, William Lane Craig arguing with uh, a certain f f um, scientist on that video, and he said it's a computer. Yeah. And um, that's, that's the same thing that you're trying to do, right? <coughs> yes. Okay. Where is it different? from um, the scientist's argument um, when William Lane Craig eventually says, well, 
you can call it whatever you want, but there are, there are some certain um, necessary attributes that one would attribute to a cause of the universe uh, due to reasons, which um, I could give you, but unless you, unless you ask me, I, I will not do so. Um, if you're just going to say, okay, it's the flying spaghetti monster, just as a name, not necessarily saying it's uh, made of noodles and meatballs, then it's just a semantic game, just like Jacob said. If you're just going to call it that, we're fine with that. It's just simply that we call this necessary being that is the cause or explanation of the universe God. And any more information could be argued for. Uh, which God it is, what attributes it has, etc. Yeah, the arguments for which God, after you get to the point of, uh, let's use Kalam, for example, that well, argument I, isn't used to argue for the existence of the Christian God, just a God in general. Which God, or suite of gods, if you will, are separate arguments entirely. Okay, I agree. The fly the reason he used the computer analogy is because you even saw what William Lane Craig did. Right before William Lane Craig stopped talking, he added in, it's a personal God. No, his Yeah, and I can give you a reason no for that. You go ahead. Me. Go ahead. Go ahead. Okay, please. Let me let me give you the explanation why he says it's a personal being. Whatever the cause of the universe is, is by definition immaterial, spaceless and timeless. The only way for a timeless state of affairs where there is no material or space for that to cause something to come into being, it cannot be by way of a natural process or any type of process because there is no cause. And the only way for an <laughs> uninfluenced um, state of affairs to change into, for example, the Big Bang, is by a personal choice. That's <laughs> the argument. Are you now, you can laugh, but can you give I me can, a critique yes, why right that now, is Right now. In order for someone to make a choice, you need a, moment, you need a moment before that choice, you need a moment whilst you're making that choice, and you need a moment after that choice. There's a well, that, that, that's just simply false. Uh, I can conceive of a state of affairs where somebody Whether has... you can ready conceive of something or not is irrelevant. It's incoherent. That's not how it works. Well, if it's incoherent, could you give me a reason why it is not possible to be in a timeless state of affairs while having the intention to create? You're implying that in that state of affairs without the universe, God is not really doing anything, and then he's thinking about, hmm, maybe I should create the universe, and then he creates the universe. But that is not the philosophical assumption that Craig is making. Craig is saying, no, God has this intention eternally. He gives an example of a man holding a tree branch, and he wants, his intention is not to fall, so what he does is he holds on to the tree branch. He could be in a timeless state of affairs when he's holding this tree branch to make sure that he does not fall. And then he cho chose to release the branch and fall down. Also, Why also, is that uh, impossible? <laughs> also, Esplin, the whole, the whole deal about the Kalam argument is saying that for, uh, is that for a cause for the universe, it must, it must transcend time and must transcend space. Okay, and yet the intelligence has still has a will of its own. By God's will, the universe was created. That's all it's saying. It has it's it's not it's trying to say anything about about whether or not it took I'm... time or whether or not it took space. As a matter of fact, it to the very points of a cause for the universe have needing to be timeless and spaceless are the definitions are given for. A, 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 a what is it, a a, um, a reasoning for the possibility of there being any kind of God? Okay, the problem I have with that is, I wasn't saying. I was simply explaining where the flying spaghetti monster thing comes from. Where well, we all know where it comes from, Esplin. It comes okay. from a school teacher in Kansas. All right, let me respond to philosopher because those are two different points. One. 
the argument we're having is literally the argument against theism. It, you can't propose that isn't a mistake I made. You first have to show that that's right. The branch argument is an absurd argument. You can't compare How God... How is it an absurd argument, Eflin? I'm explaining to you. There was still a point before he let go of the branch, before he made the decision to let go yes, of the branch. Yes, and that is the state of affairs in which God exists without the universe. The moment when he holds on, there is no prior moment. He is in that state of affairs timelessly. But he and still because had to he shift from that moment, to, but he still had to shift from that to yeah, but that is not a problem. the universe. That is, that, that's the whole point. Craig is and you are wrong. That, that, that prior, point does not make okay, sense. Okay, could you give me a reason to doubt the logical consistency of a state of affairs without the universe where God has the intention to create, then the second state of affairs is the beginning of time so and the I universe have to in which God actualizes assumption. his intent to create. Now, Esplin, before you answer, I, I do not appreciate you laughing at me because you don't understand the argument. Oh my You God. made two assertions. You, you said at me logically for four impossible. Hours. By the way, you said it's logically impossible, but you didn't give a reason. You just started laughing and saying, huh, oh, that's logically impossible, or I have an issue with that. Well, could you enlighten us about your confusion? Because it seems, and I'm not trying to be rude here, but it seems that you get frustrated that we don't understand your videos, but during the whole uh, episode or the Skype call that we had concerning your video, we never got to a point, oh, he means that. Oh, we were so mistaken. That never happens. So either we are all completely confused and there are people far more intelligent than me and I, I also think far more intelligent than you and we all just don't seem to grasp your intent or your meaning in your videos. So I'm not trying to be rude, but maybe no, you're not it. clarifying enough for us to understand. Okay. I also okay. mean this is a bit of constructive criticism. Yes. I find it rather difficult that with ten people watching the same video that the ability for the comprehension of English just suddenly flew out the window. So if your ideas are having, if your ideas Jesus are having, Christ! Why do three of you get to speak before I get to speak? Because I Why wasn't can't done. I respond to because I wasn't one of your points. Because no I wasn't finished. Philosopher finished. It was my turn to respond to him. You're and then I started talking. Different points. And well, the, well, no. I think you guys got, I was bringing up the same point. I was bringing up the same point. We're, we're, we're the, kind of the, 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 we're the, the, swapping him, William. I think we do need to let him speak. Yeah, you guys got to speak for four hours with, when well, I was no, there just, to just, make a just let, let, let me just finish this one thing. Okay, I get to talk after him. All right, fair enough. What I'm saying is that if your ideas are having that much trouble being communicated, you need to look at the common denominator of the problem. Maybe you need to learn how to communicate your ideas better. Okay. Because I find it rather difficult that ten of us yeah, in the were, same call I, couldn't understand your points. The, and here's my problem. Ten of you didn't. Violently Graceful and Darinette completely disagreed with you. We talked for like three hours yesterday. And we pointed out everything wrong with your arguments, which is kind of why I wish they were there. It's easy to feel all secure when all of you are just agreeing with each other. Darinak didn't say anything because this was you guys' video to me. That's why he stayed almost completely quiet. Violent, or Violently Graceful was the only one who occasionally raised a voice of reason. Except I think Philosopher was a little bit fair at some point, actually maybe challenging you guys' assertions. But, yeah, it wasn't ten of you. It was you people, violent, violently graceful, and Dorinak were not on your side with this. Okay, so on what points did they disagree? Well, no, wait, wait, wait. Yes, wait, wait. if you're going to make an assertion like that, please give us at least three examples. 
And by the way, I kind of I kind of take offense to saying that he, they're the those two are the only ones who are raising up a voice of reason. It takes a modicum of reason to be able to go through these videos and be able to give our and be able to give our thoughts on this in a in, well, in a let, rational let, sense. Let's, let, uh, let's, let's, yeah, let's let everyone talk. The reason that I I gave or any other uh, person gave. Feel free, yes, but go ahead. Okay. You back to the uh, who is Anthony? Back to the thing about um, what, we, what was I talking about specifically with you? Hold on, guys, I'll be right back. The state of affairs in which God has the oh, intent yeah. to create, and then oh, yeah. the next state, state of affairs, affairs where creation begins. In order to shift from nothing to something, in order for change to occur. You need time. It doesn't matter whether that first moment of change is the start of the universe or not. In order for there to be... If you have a string of events, point A is the eternal state in which he's intending to make a decision or intending to create the universe, and then you have point B. You need time at both those points. If you're saying that I need to assert why... I'm saying you need to assert, why not? You're the one making me disprove well, actually, the assertion you made. Actually, I agree with you there. Um, the, the issue is the, that there can only be one state of affairs, um, uh, and I'm just going to use the normal language, otherwise people might get confused, before the Big Bang. That there is no real before because there is no time before. But there is a state of affairs in which the universe does not not create uh, the, does not exist, and uh, then there's another state of affairs in which the universe does exist. So, if there were three, or more precise, two events before that state of affairs where the universe is and time actually starts, then your critique is valid. But I would not say that, or I don't see the necessity to say that there is a second state prior to the Big Bang. There's simply one. A state where there's no time, no space, and um, no material in which uh, God, or the necessary being, has the intent to create. That's one state of affairs. In that state of affairs, nothing changes until he chooses to create. And that's the second state of affairs. That's the moment where time begins. There's no logical inconsistency in saying that the antecedent state of affairs before the Big Bang cannot be a state of affairs in which a timeless, spaceless, immaterial being cannot have an intention. Timelessly. Okay. Also, also, uh, Esplin, that you're still forgetting the whole, the whole uh, deal with the Kalam statement. It's talking about, first of all, the understanding of the origin of the universe. The universe had a beginning. Something that is transcendent beyond time and space, by definition, must be transcendent beyond time and space. Yet, have a will to create the universe. Okay. And because because you know God is the being that we concept that we would conceptualize in this case to have a will and being transcendent beyond time and space, it is entirely it is entire it makes perfect sense that he would be able to create the, the universe. Yeah, because, but Esplin is critiquing that very point. He's saying yeah, that's the that uh, uh, there's an attribute to this cause of the universe, whatever it is. Um, that's being attributed arbitrarily to it, namely agency. That is his argument. Now, his uh, argument supporting that is, well, there is a state of affairs, actually two states of affairs, before the Big Bang uh, begins, where God um, is in a timeless state of affairs, not thinking about anything, and then he thinks about, well, maybe I should create well, the universe. Can I interject there? Can I interject there? Sure, sure. My point is not that there has to be two state of affairs. My point is for that anything to be considered a state of affairs, you need time. When well, you have to prove that because there, no, there is you have to prove in philosophy the there is no contradiction. Well, I, I could give you sources 
for philosophers. Sources for what? First of all, let me also disagree say with you on, on me, the issue that a state of up, affairs up, hold requires hold time. Hold up. I could give sources for that. Hold up. Hold up. Also, there's another point of the assumption that there was a before the universe. The Big Bang Theory only talks about T01. Exactly. That's why, that's why I said that I'm only saying before so people do not get confused. I would not say before when I was speaking to a philosopher because a philosopher knows or a cosmologist knows that to say before the Big Bang is a contradiction or just doesn't make sense because there is no time. So if you say all of time, you would say, well, that, that means from T1 or T0 you still have a problem to, to, now, till now. Because you're still saying this thing existed before time. Even if you don't use the word before, you're saying this thing existed, not time. You well, have, the quantum the singularity reason why I'm saying that time. is that it's, it is uh, far more irrational to say, well, that's not the only reason, of course, but it's far more rational to say that the whole Big Bang came from absolutely nothing. Well, if you want to believe that, I mean, feel oh, free, please. but do not call yourself what, rational. Now we're, now we're arguing the very core of the difference between theism and atheism. No, we're not, because even, because even scientifically, you do, to define the Big Bang is to define that the universe came from nothing. It is a very commonly, it is a very commonly known thing. No, it isn't. That's not the Big Bang... I can't believe I'm literally could you, well, could, could you give us any? Could you give us any proof to trust your authority on these matters? Because simply saying that—that's what, what I really noticed. You simply say, "No, that's wrong. No, that's wrong." But you don't well, give you a reason. You just did that to me. You just said that the uni that the Big Bang theory is saying that something came from nothing. How about? Every atheist on YouTube who argues against that exact sentence, that that is not what the Big Bang Theory is saying. Uh, wait, is, this all, is this all theists I'm arguing with? Is there an atheist in here? Evo Jen's an atheist. Uh, can, you, uh, can you tell me when he said, positing that the Big Bang is saying that everything came from nothing? Who, me? Uh... I, I'm, I'm talking to Esplan. Who said that? And who are you referring to? Because I'm talking to, I'm talking about it to Esplan. When, when, that who posited what? When, yeah. when, when did philosopher... Uh, no, Brandon, like just now. He said that the Kalam is saying, or not the Kalam, he said that the Big Bang Theory is saying that everything came from nothing. A moment ago, he just said that, and then philosopher did the common Christian thing. Well, which is which is more likely that it came? Or no, you said that it's less rational to say that it came from nothing than to, yeah. than to say uh, that it had a cause. That, that that is absolutely true. The the yeah, thing no, is, that's, that's we as true. philosophers try to look at the circumstances, and uh, we, unlike uh, Sherlock Holmes, do not say that if one excludes all logical possibilities, the illogical must be true. Rather, we as philosophers try to find a logical and consistent reason for us to think that something is true. Now, if the universe came seemingly from nothing, um, a state of affairs where there is no time, space, or matter, um, that seems highly yeah, that's not what uh, the impossible. Theory says. That's just well, that, not that's what the, the post Bang. That, that is the postulate of the Big Bang. It no, is, it is an not. Extrapolation. The Big Bang only talks and about. And as what are you I, think that are you saying that the universe had always existed? I'm saying scientists simply say we don't know. The Big Bang theory. Well, that, does that, not that's kind of naive. I mean, but, I I, it, I cannot do right now, but I could give you multiple cosmologists. It doesn't matter whether you can find a scientist or two who says that. Most science... Well, the two. Big Bang Theory doesn't well, posit could you, that. Could you give me... Okay, okay let, let us be academic here. Could you give me scientists of such an authoritative degree which would contradict what I'm saying? And let's Neil deGrasse Tyson, Michio Kaku... Um, 
What, what's his name? Well, could, could you could you not do right now because I'm actually uh, sitting on a couch in my pajamas and it's two in the morning somewhat. No, no, it's one in the oh, morning. You're just right? asking yeah. me. Yes I, no, can I? Give but it? I could mail like, it to you something if huh? you would like. I I could mail you the the uh, uh, cosmologist that would disagree with you. I'm sure you can find a cosmologist that could disagree with me. I can find dozens that disagree with you. Have you even watched an atheist YouTube video? They almost... Yeah, have... Yes, I have, and I've, I've debated with an atheist. So, wait, how is... Wait, 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 wait. I have, a, I have a question, because it seems like you're arguing against main well, atheist... Uh... I, I'm willing to give some authority. I, of course, I cannot. I, I do not reveal my real identity on YouTube or on Skype. No, no, because no, 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 no. I, I wasn't at, no I, you misunderstand. No, I'm not asking that at all. What I'm saying is, you seem to be making arguments against the idea that there was no God in general. I, that's not why I'm here. I'm here to argue that the points that you pointed out, the things that you pointed out that were wrong, either was not what I was saying, or I don't even know where you're getting it from. Well, just on point two, it, it, it is kind of um, irrelevant to the validity of one's argument uh, if you know where it comes from. That's kind of irrelevant. Uh, it just depends on, is it a sound argument? No, no, no. And I'm, I'm willing mean, to discuss that, so let's continue. No, what I meant was I didn't know where you were coming from because I wasn't making those arguments. Uh, that okay, is could, to say, could you give us, could you give like, us the correct still have interpretation a of with or flying spaghetti monster? Okay, I, I, I mean, I, I think I, I think I would, I think that Jacob would agree. I think that we've strayed well off topic here. You know, I'm not reading the chat, so I'm sorry. Uh, That's okay. I missed something. And just so you know, uh, since I had something to do with that, I apologize. But I think we should stay on topic. Okay. Um. So, what the hell were we talking about last? Flying spaghetti monster. Thank you. I was simply explaining where that came from. You say it wasn't an argument. I don't know how to argue against that. Uh, it was originally an argument that ended up becoming a parody. The point was, oh, and you say that the Kalam, or the William Lane Craig thing, the moment he posited that it had to be a personal god, I, I, I like how you conflated that with agency, because something that simply has agency to create the universe and then never does anything, or really we don't know its... Um, attributes beyond that is not the same as a personal god. Sorry. Well, it's, That's it's, not... what Craig is simply saying is, and he said, I believe he says that in the video, all I'm arguing for is that it's, a, it's an agency, or in other words, it's a personal cause. Personal and agency are the same thing. It's just a different way of saying it. Um, that, that's all he's saying. And there are arguments for that, and you claim that it was a bare assertion. Now, I've tried to give you the argument as good I, as I can. I agree memory. with some of the arguments you gave me. But, yeah, Not, but if, if, if you're still going to contend that it's a bare assertion, and no. I don't know if you are, but if you are, could you, um, uh, how could you do that, con seeing that I gave you an argument? And if, you, if you're going to say, no, the argument's not correct, could you give us a reason to doubt why that argument, or could you give us a reason to think that it's not correct? Oh, well, one little thing, one little thing, Esplan, before you answer, I, I want to interject on this. The whole deal with Craig saying that it was personal, really when you weigh it against the whole deal with the Kalam argument, what, the, what him and the other guy were discussing, it really has nothing to do with it. He just said personal. Now, we have, we, I didn't watch the entire debate. When it comes to the, when it comes to what I said, maybe there was something in the debate that he mentioned that 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 uh, we didn't know about, and you know, I don't know if you watched the entire debate or not, but I didn't. That's okay, why I can only respond. All right, so but 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 uh, Esplan, then that means that looks a lot more or less like you were nitpicking on that debate, simply because Craig mentioned personal, doesn't negate anything else that was added to the argument. Okay, I'm not 
I'm not saying it does. I was simply explaining what the flying spaghetti monster spaghetti monster argument is. It has nothing to do with that first cause. It only is a response when Christians don't explain where they're getting from that first cause to Jesus. Whether you guys were doing that is irrelevant. Whether some Christians do that, but not all Christians do that, is irrelevant. I'm simply... Then why are you even bringing it up in the first because place? Because you said you... No, I didn't, Because you Splin. brought it up in that other video. He said nothing about Jesus, Esplin. I never said I he watched, did. Then I why are you bringing the argument up in the about first Jesus. place? This because I spaghetti monster argument is a saying. cleverly disguised ad hom. It's no, it is not. Argument. It's a, no, it's it a, it's an Christians, to Christians see almost every argument against them as an ad hom. No, it, it's no, not no, an ad hom. No, yes, no Esplin. Uh, yes, do. Don't just assert, yes, we do. You just no. asserted, no, I don't. Why do you... <laughs> I, I didn't say that. Not you. I can't see who's talking. I'm not... I was talking to Jacob. I'm sorry. I thought you were Jacob. Just You're now. making a hasty generalization about most Christians. You cannot use this argument in general, even if that was the case. We tried to tell you this over and over again. It is not a valid argument. You are Jacob, making a category could, error. Could I, could I ask you a question? Go Seeing um, um, Esplin's critique, uh, uh, the only way I can see for that critique to be valid uh, with all due respect, Esplan, is if you said that you would provide an argument that would bring you uh, to the Christian, specific Christian God, did you do something like that? Wait, I'm, I'm confused. Uh, what, what I'm you asking is... That I did, should have Jacob, did, no, no, I'm asking oh, Jacob. Oh, ja I'm, I'm sorry, asking, I thought you were... I'm, I'm asking Jacob if you, Jacob, did you argue... And, or did you give an argument to argue from whatever uh, axiom you want to begin with to the Christian God specifically? I did never you, once uh, argued what? for a Christian God. Not that one. has then, nothing to then, do. Then, Esplin, uh, your argument does not apply, uh, but it could it still very well be a good argument because I've met plenty of um, Christians who I deem um, unsophisticated concerning argumentation, who just simply assert that because the cause of the Big Bang is a personal being, therefore it is the Christian God. So that, in that instance, your argument would stick, but here it just doesn't seem to follow. That instance is what I was talking about. I was explaining to him, if you actually watched the video, that yes, if the argument if the flying spaghetti monster argument was used in the way he was saying, it would be where a semantic... Esplin, es I don't mean to interrupt, but where did my where in my video did I once argue for the Christian God? I didn't say you did. I said you uh, you said that you don't take the spaghetti the flying spaghetti monster argument and as I a still valid. Well, let me finish as a valid argument against. Um, against the general idea of God. And I was saying that that's not how it's used. It is only used when people make an argument for the general idea of God and then skip to the Jesus argument. Philosopher, you just made my point for me. I wasn't saying that he did that. I was explaining that he's misunderstanding what that argument is supposed to be used for. Well, it's not was, supposed to be used... Was, it, it seems to, then it seems to me that you made an issue out of a non-issue because in your video it makes it makes your case and maybe that's just because you you take you 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 uh, recorded it without scripting it makes it look like you took that yet you just, that you stuck in something that wasn't there because Jacob never said anything about the Judeo-Christian God or any kind of God. You know, but rather just the flying spaghetti monster being an argument for God, and yet somehow along the way you stuck in discussions about, well, not so much discussions, just notions about, you know, the, uh, Yahweh Elohim, you know, the, the, the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, and, and no, no pun intended, uh, but, you know, it just seems that, uh, it seems like, it, it made it look like you were saying, some, that you were that you were accusing Jacob of saying something he didn't. We're not saying that's what you... That's not saying we're not saying that's what you outrightly did, but it looks like that. 
It seems yeah. that you are both in the same position. You're frustrated that Jacob is uh, saying that, uh, or arguing against arguments that you did not may, make. And <laughs> it is actually the same way for Jacob. He, he considers yeah. your argument to be silly because he didn't make any such argument to which that argument that you provided concerning the spaghetti monster would apply. <laughs> you know what? That actually might be what just happened. That, that what you just said I'm doing to Jacob is what I was trying to explain. I was trying to explain that the flying spaghetti monster would be a semantics argument if that's how it were used. But again, it, it's not used that way. It's only used when, when, I'm not saying you did it, Jacob, but when, again, Christians use the necessity for God argument and then jump to the... Christ argument. It's not used in any other context. The reason I started bringing up the uh, Abrahamic thing is to show that the response to that would be, how are those things necessary for the creation of the universe? You know, like the smell of burnt flesh and all that. I brought that up because that is where you would use the flying spaghetti monster again, our argument in. And... Well, um, O mm -hmm. Only if somebody couldn't give you uh, yeah, a yeah, good exactly. rational only. reason to think that that is actually the case, of course. Yeah, and whether the argument is rational or not depends more on whether you're theist or atheist. Or, I mean, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, it doesn't depend on that. You're not going to... If, basically, if you convinced me about the other stuff in that video, you would have converted me to Christianity. <laughs> I, I'm sorry, I don't, th I don't see the methodology... Um, as valid, I don't see it as rational. Where is, you'll get... what, hold on, hold on, hold on. What what do you mean by our methodology? I'm saying that you take evidence for Christianity. You have an asymmetrical standard of evidence when it comes to Christianity. Uh, I'm sorry. I, 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 I changed the point. I, I apologize. Let me let me let me go back for a second and preface this because I don't I don't want it to go up. Um, the flying spaghetti monster thing, I'm satisfied. Does anyone else have anything else to say on that issue? You got yeah. anything to weigh into this, Evo? Uh, no, I'm just listening along for right now. I agree with uh, all points made so far. Yeah, I don't have anything else to say on that either. Okay. I'm good as well. All right. Um, I'm going to move on. Ah, what order did I do it in? All right. Well, let's move on to the um, rationality thing, to the um, argument of the phrase I wish I never used, but we'll, we'll use it because that was brought up, the whole domain of rationality. You all said I was begging the question. I was assuming that the atheist position is rational and that the theist position wasn't. I was saying that the methods by which you get to your conclusion – is not rational. Now, you guys said a few things about that that um, did make me think perhaps I was being a little too myopic in the yeah, words I was, I was using. Yeah, I was mm -hmm. gonna say I was gonna say on that, Esplin. You know, um, I recommend that in that case, because I was gonna say, do you really think that that we that the atheists go about things in an irrational manner? You know, there are some books I can point you to that give some pretty rational explanations, uh, you know, for faith. Yeah. Well, I, again, if I accepted those arguments, I would be Christian. I don't, I don't think you're getting to that. I, I see leaps in logic. But again, that, that is, that's why I'm not Christian. I didn't leave Christianity because I hated God. I wanted to be a biblical archaeologist when I was young. I left Christianity because the arguments that you're using to get to faith, I don't see as rational. In order for us to go into the argument, we would literally be arguing against the larger debate as a whole, you know, the well, theist versus theist argument. I well, don't see your... Do, well, do you get well, what I'm... Go, hmm? go, ahead, go ahead, Esplan. I was just... Uh, go, I, I can wait till you're done. Um, I actually lost my train of thought. You can go. Well, let me just sim simply <laughs> add that, of course, we, we cannot debate every specific attribute of God uh, or the Christian God um, in, in, in a Skype call. Um, yeah, no, I understand. It, to get back to the, 
to the point to lead you back to the point. Um, if you if you're saying that um, uh, no wait, let me rephrase that. Are you saying either that our method, method um, by by coming to the position that God exists? Are you saying that that method is wrong, or are you saying that the um, arguments are simply fallacious? Uh, oh, actually, that's even better. Yeah, no, you're right. Perhaps I put that wrong. Um, yeah, I'm saying. Well, I, I have an I have another problem, and this might get me into a little trouble. But I'm saying that a lot of times Christians will build up or theists will build up very long, complicated arguments that would make sense if the initial premise was not fallacious. And that when you point out the problem with the initial premise, that there isn't an attempt to correct that. That's what I was pointing out. That's I see ignoring a fallacious premise in a long argument that might be mostly rational, based on an initial premise. I see that as irrational. I well, would say it was that. dishonest, but then I'd be accusing all Christians of being dishonest. Well, uh, while, while I'd love to, while I'd love to debate you on that kind of thing, uh, that's what I know that's not that's beside the point. But I, what uh, what else you know about the video? Have, have you uh, had a problem with? Since we, I think we do need to get back to to the point. All right. The biggest thing I had a problem with was you were taking general arguments I was making against theism and um, doing what you didn't like a second ago, just laughing arrogantly about it. It's like the argument about the rationality thing is literally to the core of the larger debate. Like, of course you disagree with that. You believe that your arguments are not fallacious, that your methodology is rational. That's why you're Christian. You're looking at the data you have. You consider it valid. You consider it rational. You consider the arguments from that not fallacious. Ergo, you are theist. You're, you are exactly. laughing as if I had made some sort of foolish assumption. You, no. made, a lot, you made a lot of points that made me, many of us facepalm, like, for example... The like you made the claim that the philosophers of science during the time period were suppressed by the by other philosophers during that time. Oh, I can give you that was another thing. I can give you that in two seconds. Actually, they were, but suppressed is probably not the right word. Basically, what happened was there were two trains of thought. Um, God. Uh, one second. I'll talk about it and then I'll give you the actual names in a second because I'm, I'm finding the data right now. There was the general idea that thinking about something long enough will lead you to the right conclusion. Pure philosophy without experimentation. Um, if, if you, I'm sure you all know a lot about the sort of Greek philosophers back then. That was a big deal, believing that with rational thought alone, you, you can come to the right conclusion. Um... Yeah, that, that was kind of more Plato's uh, thoughts about um, how we could discover uh, yeah. things about reality. Also, the, so the, also the, Socrates, through his, through, his, through his Socratic method, constantly questioning things that he got to the heart of the matter. Exactly, and the reason why, um, for example, in the Middle, middle Ages, we, uh, we tend to not really focus on uh, scientific progress or uh, it's pre precursor because there was no such thing as science until really the Enlightenment, mm -hmm. um, or not anything that was called science, was because the only uh, uh, writings we had of philosophers were the writings of Plato. So it, it, it was um, just later understood that um, there were different uh, trains of thought uh, wait, wait. concerning... Uh, I have to. I have to disagree with you there. I have to disagree with you there. Wait, wait, uh, wait, Dud, you're forgetting Aristotle. Who? Well. Oh, go ahead. Who's forgetting Aristotle? I was talking Dutch. About. Oh yeah. Well, um, well, it is definitely true that there were different um, writings, but the only writings we had that were of any um, real um, volume. Um, were the writings of Plato. 
Now, it, it might be true that there were different thoughts, but what, what you were trying to say, which was really strange to my ears, was that there was a specific group of scientific or scientific uh, philosophers prior or during the same time uh, as Plato that were somehow being suppressed intentionally okay. as yeah, some let kind me, of let me, conspiracy theorists. No, I, uh, I wasn't talking like, about a conspiracy theorist. Um, let me back that up. Uh, what I was talking about was a philosopher who started to propose the idea that maybe just thinking isn't the only way to get to, con- to get to the conclusion. Maybe experimentation could get you to conclusions that thinking can't. I'm not saying that they suppressed him as a conspiracy theorist. I'm saying in the same way that group think tends to suppress um, an idea that's outside of the box. Uh, he was either ignored or uh, discredited. And so he eventually gave that up. Damn it. What is his name? Um, if I well, can't it's, find it's, his it's name... It's definitely true up. that in the um, forums around uh, the, the, the Mediterranean Arnold. area, there was definitely uh, the suppression of certain thoughts and uh, certain ideas. Um, the history of pure philosophy, as, as you said, it... Um, uh, leads back to Plato because Plato argued that there is a realm of perfect bodies and we are merely Thank a representation you. of that. That's and perfect bodies. That, that, uh, perfect bodies is the uh, whole perfect shapes thing, right? The, um, well, it's not, it's, it's not only shapes, it's yeah. also attributes uh, or virtues yeah. such as courage, justice, yeah, and all those things. You. Thank you. What I was saying was there was a competing uh, one philosopher, and I think also his student. God, it was in Cosmos. I can't remember the name of the dude, but it was in – Carl Sagan brought it up. Ah, um, oh, what was his name? God damn it. Uh, hold up. Well, uh, well I, do, I do know that maybe that that's the one you're referring to. I can't that, that I can't is. Remember. His that is name. what I was referring to, um, and I, did, I didn't even say it yet. <laughs> what I'm saying oh, no, no, is no, no. Uh, that was the first, something. the first uh, um, person that was labeled philosopher that we know of was a certain. Uh, I can look it up in a second after I uh, I've said this. Oh no, wait! I just oh shit! I uh, I lent that book out on which it's um, on the first page, I believe. Anyway. Um, um, there was a person that was labelled a philosopher that lived just past the Dark Ages of Greece, that's about 500 BC, um, that calculated uh, the uh, one of the first recorded solar eclipses. Um, so there, there was a kind of like testing or bringing into our physical world the ideas about philosophy, though this person was far before Plato, of course. Give me a moment, I might be able to look that up. Atomism. Yeah, just Google it, it's probably there. Just say Russell. Russell talks about it. Bertrand Russell, that is. Democritus? Is that who you're talking about? I think think it is, yeah. Um, And that's who... What I said wasn't just my own words. Um, I'm not sure why you face palmed. Maybe I didn't put it eloquently. Well, the thing I think the thing why we face palmed was your extrapolation of it, like saying uh, it, it would have set that that set back science for two thousand years. Well, that's that's uh, really perhaps I should have perhaps probable. I should have uh, uh, cited that that was partially a quote from Carl Sagan. Now I'm not I'm not yeah, trying to make even an if argument Carl from the Sagan made, made that calculate or that that assessment. It's uh, it's highly doubtful that um, uh, we we would be two thousand years more advanced. No, no, I understand. I understand that. Well, not that not that that would be the case. Not that that wouldn't be the case. But how could we know with any amount of confidence that exactly yeah. how far? That would set us back, or if that set us back at all. No, you're yeah, right. For if, all if that we know, would happen, people yeah, such as all, Newton, Einstein, all those people wouldn't even exist. Yeah, or it would, would be highly know, improbable that they would exist. Yeah, 
that, that's possible. For all we know, they could never have existed and we could be further back or uh, we could have advanced too far quickly and nuked ourselves out of existence. My point Sorry. wasn't that it definitely would be the case. My point was that there's a danger to having no empiricism in your arguments. That, oh, that's why I made that analogy. Because he said, he said that I was an empiricist and then went on as if I didn't know about the whole debate between empiricism and um, rationalism. I actually, I think I found the name of the uh, uh, philosopher that uh, observed the solar eclipse. Is it Thales of Miletus? Mm. No, I'm not really sure. Miletus is the first philosophical school uh, that rose in, in Greece, though. But I don't think it's that one. I think the one that was mentioned oh. before. I think that Here was the is. one. Here it is. Um, it is Democritus. Yeah, that Democritus. I was talking about. Is he, uh, right here, um, Democritus followed the tradition of, oh, the guy you just said. I, I can't pronounce that. What is it? Lucippus. Thank you, Lucippus, who seemed to have, who seems to have come from Miletus, Miletus? Miletus, yeah, exactly, Miletus. That's the first philosophical school. Yeah, the scientific well, rationalism. Dem Democritus was the first one to propose the atom. Yeah, he was. Adam proposed. But it also Adam. says they were both strict determinists and, through mat and thorough materialist, believing everything to be the result of natural laws. Unlike Aristotle and Plato, the atomists attempted to explain uh, the world without reasoning to purpose, prime mover, or final cause. Um, hold up. Well, I doubt that it actually means reasoning, right? Because to reason, it must be, it must refer no, to some kind of specific philosophical thought. No, materialist is what I'm talking about. They're saying without reasoning. Basically, I'm talking about empiricism. That's what I understand mater, uh, materialism to be. I, I well, well, there, there is a, if there's a subtle difference. nuanced differences, then yeah. But I'm a methodological materialist. I. I I want to physically test it. We have to... Oh, oh okay. The, I, I think you I, mean I, methodologically. I, 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 wait, I, you're talking I, at the same time. Yeah. Hold on, let Hibble talk. Uh, can, can I interject? Because I think I actually might have a little bit to see where you were getting at. Um, I looked it up, and there was a little bit of a divide between uh, Parmenides uh, and Democritus. Um... I got this article, forgive me, from Wikipedia, but I think it offers some clarification to this matter. In the 5th century B.C., Lucidus and his uh, pupil Democritus proposed that all matter was composed of small, individual particles called atoms in order to reconcile two conflicting schools of thought on the nature of reality. On one side was Heraclitus, who believed that na the nature of all existence is changed. On the other side was Parmenides who believed instead that all change is illusion. Parmenides denied the existence of motion, change in, change in void. He believed all existence to be single, all-encompassing, and an unchanging mass, a concept known as monism. Change in motion were mere illusion. This conclusion, as well as the reasoning that led to, may indeed seem baffling to the modern empirical mind. For Parmenides explicitly rejected sensory experience as the path to an Understanding of the universe, and instead, you surely abstract thoughts, right? Did he? Get so I, I think he disconnected. But yeah, it's. I think it's. Well, that that is absolutely true, and I believe the majority of philosophers do not fully agree with Plato, Plato or Neoplatonism. There are very few that would, and um, to to. I believe even Jacob is not uh, a a person that only holds to pure philosophy as as we've used the word in this Skype call. Yeah. Neither am I. And I'm also I'm also a Christian. I, I don't hold just pure philosophy either. Yeah, I mean, I, I don't think you do. What I was saying was Jacob Jacob seemed to be saying that I hold to a completely materialistic that there was. If you watch this video, to me, 
it seemed to be like he was saying that I hold to a completely materialistic. I don't hold any rational. I don't believe anything is possible without physical evidence. I, I never made that claim. I I never made that claim and would never think that. In fact, my YouTube channel is about science and philosophy and politics. I want to I want to be an ethicist. I philosophy is one of the most important things to me. I would never just be a pure empiricist. And I was trying to show him that that this debate isn't a recent one. The the debate between allowing for materialism and pure um philosophy or relying for philosophy and being purely materialist is a debate that went back very far. It, it's I'm aware of the debate. That's what I was trying to show him. I'm not purely an empiricist, and I am aware of the debate. Um, I, I'm not talking out of my ass, is I guess what I'm trying to say, and I'm not some sort of robot who only needs things in his hand. Someone, I don't remember who it said, but said that about math, that did I come to my conclusions through empirical testing. Well, no, I understand that math is um, an abstract concept that's a representation of... Well, you you know what I mean. I, I don't know okay. how to put it. Okay, then, Esplin, then this is another point that shows that when you make a video, you need to state your arguments a little more clearly. Like I said before, I recommend that you that, that you script your, your stuff before you go on camera. Because I mean, and and it's not it's not trying to say that you that you don't mean well. Because you know, a lot of people I I, I make most of my videos unscripted. Uh, but when it comes to really important arguments, especially when it comes to debating someone you know in, in the, the realm of faith, I have to I have to uh to call. Uh, I'm sorry, it's a little sorry. bit. Uh, Hold on, just a second. It, it's all right. It's just kind of messing up my trans. But anyway, so. Like, Whenever I have, especially when I have to debate somebody in map effect, I have to write down the main points that I need to make, or else I'm going to go off on some major tangents because I am because I am very much ADD. Okay, well I I am I'm ADD too, but uh, my biggest problem was not that you guys misunderstood what I was saying. My biggest problem was while some of the things I say are difficult to understand. It, it seems like you all went into the argument in ponage mode. You took the least possible uh, or the least po the least charitable possible position you could take on someone's positions. And you ran with that, sometimes for 25 minutes on one sentence. Uh, well, that's funny. We had to do the video on merits, man. Excuse me, sir. Coming from a man who typed on, one of his... Yellow's Thunderbolt, I see you're full of fail? I mean, yeah. Really? Let me explain that. Let me explain uh, also, my hustle. And also, Esplin, making that very first video Let me explain a, 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 why a I made those. On tirade, Let me explain why I made those. I made those because me and Thunderbolt have been going back and forth for a while. Have you ever argued with someone where you clarify your point and then both of you move on from there? Then you then um, if they misunderstand your point, you stop, clarify, then they seem like they understand and go on from there. I had been going back and forth with him for many videos. Then he leaves for two weeks. And then when he comes back, he makes a video as if the last five videos we had didn't exist. L let, me, let me finish. Even if that's not the case, that is what I thought was the case. If you watch those videos, not one of them... I did not call... You guys were talking about ad hominem attacks. I said he was wrong. I said it in an aggressive way because I was genuinely angry. I was frustrated because someone I thought either knew... I thought knew what I was saying but didn't. Or... Which is... Which is weird because we clarified it over... I made several videos just clarifying... Or not several. I made like two videos just clarifying that one point. So you can see my frustration when, even if he didn't mean to, I at least thought he was just ignoring my points. And again, going back to the original points that he thought I was making, that I showed him that I wasn't. That's, that's that, why I was angry. That's, 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 that's when let him talk. Not, that does not excuse... I don't need an excuse. All I said was that he was wrong. I did not say he was stupid. I did not say he was retarded. One or two times in my main videos, I said... 
if you believe that, then you're moronic. Yeah, that's a little much, but I was pissed off. But I did not call him any of the things that you're accusing me. All I said was that he was wrong. I was frustrated, and I don't apologize for saying that someone's wrong. It doesn't matter if you say someone's wrong 38,000 points. You're not calling them 38,000 times. You're not calling them stupid. You're just saying they're wrong. That is all. You guys said the title was... Yeah, in my mind, his arguments were full of fail. I was sick of explaining the same thing over and over again. I made that first video so I wouldn't explode during my other videos. I had to put that video up there because... I don't know how to say this. I guess what I'm going to say is going to sound weird. But I kept thinking he was... I kept thinking he was purposely taking my opinions out of context. And then, after talking to him for a while, I thought he was a nice guy. I Basically, it's like you explain something to someone over and over again, and you, they seem like a rational person, and they seem like a person who's not going to misinterpret you, and then they do it. So you give them another chance, and they do it again. Well, Why misinterpretation is... Huh? Misinterpretation is not in, intended, I no, believe. You know, I thought it was, because I, I literally... We literally went over it, and I said that I was not saying that all theists are irrational or all atheists are rational. And in that last video, he said it again. And I just, I'm like, why is he doing this to me? I said it like 20 times. And we as, even came to, what? Esplan, uh, as somebody who actually watched your videos with Jacob, there's a reason why we came to these conclusions. And that's because you came, it came, you came off as saying that. It, it may not have been what you intended. Okay, okay, but I, I know what you're saying. If that was it, that wouldn't be a problem. But I explained to him, and he seemed to understand. You re he responded as if he understand. My, the most important thing I was trying to say, I said in those other videos, if you take nothing from this video... Understand that I am not trying to say that all atheists are rational people. I'm trying to say that on this particular issue, I don't consider the theist way of getting to their conclusion to be rational. No, I haven't heard all theist arguments, and no, not all the atheists are rational. I even said well, that, that atheists are just like, I don't give a damn, whatever. I'm saying... That brings us back to the, to the point which... Uh, began this this discussion uh, or this part of the discussion um, uh, are you saying that um, the arguments presented are fallacious or are you saying our method is fallacious let me clarify that if a premise is false that does not mean the argument is irrational it no, simply means the argument is false so if you're going to say that argumentation is irrational then it you you are probably saying our method is irrational. Yeah, let me let me say this, and I know you're not going to like this, but this is the experience I've had with Christians. When I point out that the argument is irrational, Christians either will keep using that same argument or in another conversation use it. That is where I'm saying it's irrational. I'm saying if you use an argument that has been shown to be irrational, you are, or excuse me, I'm sorry, if you use an argument that has shown to be fallacious and you keep using it, then you're irrational. That's what I'm saying. I'm saying that at least with the they you could you got a Christian could be rational in every other regard, but with that thing, I see Christians using the same fallacious arguments over and over again. Well, well let, let me suggest you not say that they are irrational then, but then that they're dishonest. Because well, well, I everyone ate me alive when I said that. But to be fair, um, that was my fault because I meant to make a video and then make a separate one to Rational Roundtable, and everyone thought I was calling him dishonest, and I actually wasn't. He's I'm subscribed to him. He's one of my uh, favorite theists, you know. But that was my mistake. But I'm kind of I'm kind of leery about saying that theists are dishonest. I. No, I'm not saying well, it's not simply theists. I mean, if your critique is valid concerning people 
uh, that present arguments such as Jacob or such as myself, though on, on my channel I, I've only really had critique videos, uh, planning on making a more positive, uh, a more positive case. Anyway, that, that, that's beside the point. Um, if you're going to say Jacob is um, dishonest because he keeps using an argument uh, which has shown to be refuted, um, then Jacob is, is, is wrong in, and dishonest in what he's doing. On the other hand, if Jacob has uh, or is not convinced that your critique or a critique of somebody else concerning his argument is uh, a valid one, um, it is up to Jacob to defend his argument. And if he deems his defense to be enough, uh, he would then be uh, honest again to use the argument. Yeah, because this is this is an open discussion. We're free to disagree. Just because you think it's fallacious doesn't mean that any of us do. Because we're not. No, I understand that. that. We're not obligated under any circumstance to agree with every single reputation that's given to us. No, I understand that. Also, I have, also I have something to say here. Um, I mean, we, I, I agree with you that Christians and atheists alike will present them seriously. Um, irrational arguments in defense of what they believe or whatnot, and you continue to use those arguments regardless of what we say to them. But the thing is that I, I guess it's just I guess I, maybe maybe it's just me who's thinking this. But you, you, ask, you tend to let your emotions get the better of you in, in these in these respects. I no, mean, I agree with that. Fru- it can be frustrating. It can be irritating. But if you are to debate a person, that's pretty much what these videos that we do on YouTube, especially versus another person, whether they be Christian or atheist or theist, what have you, they are a form of debate. And if you lose your cool like that, it's it, it um it, it's it's an amount to basically losing the game before you even play. All right, I'll give you that. That's definitely the case. the 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 only The only thing I'll say in my defense was. That video I made against him was not like... If I had just made that video out of the gate, that would be psychotic. Also, a lot of times I didn't clarify my point. Because that video was to him. We, I thought he understood what I was saying. Only because we had done so many videos back and forth. What you saw was the end product of a building up of frustration. I didn't just snap out of the blue. We had been making videos back and forth, and I was adjusting my argument to his statements, and I thought he was adjusting his arguments to mine. As split. Then, as split. Sorry, sorry. If, if, if I mean to, can I interject? Certainly, certainly. Okay. Even even if someone were trying, even if we're trying to clarify, like like two people are trying to clarify each other's arguments, trying to understand the other, it doesn't. It does, there's there's no set of of number as to how we can how we can finally come to a official understanding. No, I understand. What I was saying was, it sounded like you went back. Like, you started to understand, and then left well, what you weeks, should have and then done, reverted to what, the beginning. What you should have done is, instead of going straight to the video camera, what you should have done was left me a comment or a PM asking me if I understood your argument. If I if I didn't and you gave me valid reasons as to how I misunderstood you, I would have easily have like okay, I understood you here, I misunderstood you here, etc. 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 You don't go straight to a straight to the video camera and make a four part video response where you're in where you're in this absolutely ridiculous ponage mode, especially with your first video. I was like, what the fuck is that? Oh, uh, that was a result. <laughs> you explained to me later. And I'll concede this. Your video seemed incredibly condescending to me. That's why I responded in you, an equally well, con- condescending have, way. Like well, I of th- course, no one's going to be like, yeah, I was condescending. Like, there's nothing... <laughs> like, what do you say? It's like, I would have said that I was being nice. Well, yeah, I'm sure you would have. That I had spoken to you before. We had made videos, and I saw a definite shift in tone. I thought you actually were doing that. I responded with what I thought was equal arrogance from what you were saying this to me. This, you also I, did a lot of the quotation marks, what you call rationality. You sounded like, what's his name, Kent Hovind, when he says supposed contradictions. You know, like just that condescending, irritating... 
As what? As you're, now you're starting to sound like rocking Mr. E. This is I don't the same kind of thing he would do. I don't know how that is. Uh, if, if, I, if I might interject, Philo, brother, you're reverbing really badly. Um, well, let me just uh, say this before I go because it's pretty late over here. Right. Um, right. Let me just say, um, Esplin, I would agree with what people have said uh, just a moment ago uh, regarding uh, emotional outbursts. Um, I think that it's a detriment to your calls um, in, in your videos. Um, uh, I do, after listening to you right now, consider you to be uh, a pretty reasonable man. And, um, yeah, feel free to uh, critique uh, me. Uh, but, um, yeah, well, if you feel the need, I'd be ready to uh, to discuss either the the issue of uh, the state of affairs concerning the beginning of the universe, if you really think that uh, it's invalid. And um, to all you other guys here in the chat, thank you for inviting me. It was it was fun, though. <laughs> very, I was very sleepy uh, last time. No problem. <laughs> and no I'm problem. still right now. <laughs> and, uh, get some sleep, uh, man. Uh, get, <laughs> invite me next time, and sure. I'd be happy to uh, come again, uh, even in a more... Less, less confusing, less frustrating, and less criticizing um, <laughs> circumstance. Anyway, I'm babbling on. Uh, I'll see you guys some other time. Bye bye. All right, later then. Take care, bro. Okay, um, uh, um, uh, Esplin, uh, I, I wanted to tell you, like, okay, there was a person who I, who was used to be on YouTube, uh, called himself Truthful Christian. Uh, I, I know, I know all about Truthful Christian. Okay, I yeah, know. you know that this guy was just a total tard. Um, he, you know, he, he is, as we like to say in Christianity, so heavenly minded that he's no earthly good. <laughs> and yeah, and, and I tried to talk with him on Skype. He didn't, I mean, and I'd seen how he talked with other people over, over, over a microphone. He refused to talk to me over microphone and did the stupidest, silliest things with me. He tried to challenge me. He didn't think I was really a Christian and tried to challenge me to a Bible study. To a, to a Bible uh, debate and called me a troll, blocked me twice, even though the first time he apologized for it, you know, and started put it put me through all these uh, different questionnaires and crap. And I have to admit, I was in, I was both I was both amused in one respect and infuriated in another. But I can't, but when if you see the videos that I that I made, you know, in response to the to the things that he did. I wasn't, I didn't, you know, I didn't express myself in a really, uh, you know, uncouth manner. That's why we're just trying to say is that YouTube is basically a forum. And, yeah. you, so, and you have to remember that you're not, you, you're the person you're talking to isn't the only person who's going to be watching your video unless you have the settings specifically for him to access. No, I understand. I'm not, I wasn't afraid of other people chiming in. Again, what I'm saying is not that I was just, how do I say this? Uh, I... I don't know if betrayal is the right word. Okay. If he genuinely didn't understand, then okay. I, I think we, act, me and Jacob actually talked about that. But I just want to explain my theory of mind. And my theory of – or I, I want to give you don't an you idea of where – I'm sorry? Perception? Perspective? My, thank you. I couldn't think of the word. My, my, uh, pers my perspective and my perception on what I thought he was doing. I thought – Basically, because also at the end he said he didn't want to argue anymore. I thought that's I put that there because I wanted to like end the discussion, let you have the, the last. No, word. I I understand. I, I understand this that was, now. It was not but at meant the time. To... It sounded. It sounded. I I know. Let, let's get that clear. I know you didn't mean that now. I, after talking, after actually after talking with you for like one minute with Darinak and violent uh, or violently graceful, I realized that I misunderstood. What you were saying, only because your attitude was so much, so different from what it was or what I perceived it to be in that video. My response was because I had actually come to um, like you as a person. I actually thought you were a pretty reasonable guy, which before I didn't. And I felt in that video that you erased the last four videos. Now, you may not have. But that was where I was coming from. I wasn't coming from just some random, like, tarred, like, 
truthful Christian where he's just blatantly dishonest. You know, I, I was coming from someone who, I don't know if you consider him a friend, but someone who you've come to an understanding with, who suddenly, out of the blue, ignores the, la- ignores the understanding you come to, or at least you thought come, came to, and just wanted to make one like sort of condescending sending jab before he stepped out of the conversation. Again, if I, if that wasn't the case, and I, I now see that isn't, I apologize. But I typically don't make ranting videos at individuals unless I feel that's what they were doing. Okay. In ter- um, okay. Can I interject? Sure. In terms of condescension, let me use let me give you a, a antidote. Um, I, I about like around January, November, December. I forget the exact time frame. We had, me and Abusive Antithias had a video back and forth. His videos, his first video towards me was very condescending. And I, and I just completely ignored that. Because you don't address that kind of condescension in a video response. You, you focus strictly on the arguments that are made. Someone okay. could be a complete jackass and not, and they can still make valid points. You what you you focus strictly on the arguments. That's when we're when we're having discussion, especially on a philosophical discussion. We focus on the arguments. No, I understand what you're saying. I, I understand that I didn't do that. I'm just trying to explain to you. Yeah, I, I'll give you that. It was an emotional thing. Um, again, someone who I thought understood what I was saying, it seemed like wasn't on purpose. So. Um, well, At the risk of sounding weak, my feelings were hurt, and I responded appropriately. Well, what you should have done, and you can, and, and this is something you can learn for future, for the future, is that if you if you have a if you watch a video response that's sent to you, and you feel you got misunderstood, you don't automatically make a video right away. You you either PM the person who made the video, or you leave a comment asking if like clarifying further what you were trying to say. You don't go into an emotional outburst because that makes you look bad. Okay. And that makes, uh, that makes someone I'll, not want to have a talk with you. That's why I I'll hung be, up on you yesterday. I'll yeah. be the first to say that there are a lot of communication, there's a lot of uh, walls in communication we can create when we do this. And I, I'll be the first to say that I've run into some real douchebags o- online. And if I blew my top all the time, I would be a really angry guy. Seriously, you do, you do not want to just be blowing your top all the time on YouTube because you're going to be angry all the time because there's some real douchebags on YouTube. So, and, I think and the medical there. nomenclature for that is heart attack patient. <laughs> <laughs> and there are a lot of people out there who take advantage of uh, that they, they, they smell butt hurt from a mile away, and they're and they and they will they will crucify you over it. Yeah, because that's what I was saying. That's why I was saying letting your emotions rule you in these types of things, man. Is you you lose the game before you even play. Yeah, no, I I understand. Uh, and actually, if you actually look at the comments I put to people, um, I I have never been successfully trolled because I I usually wait a while before the person. Um, I w- I look for cues as to whether this person is a troll or not, and no matter how much they throw at me, I just throw back their arguments. The well, only well, time wait wait the only time it's possible for me to actually get upset is if I actually start to like the person and are coming towards considering them a friend. And it was actually the feeling of of what I what I thought was betrayal that made me react that way. It wasn't just the condescending because again I have if you look at you can look at my comment history I have many people trying to troll me and not only are they not able to but sometimes I actually end up having a rational argument with them because again I just keep sending them data or, or I acknowledge their anger and I say I understand that you're angry only only if it goes the other way only if someone again I realize it was my perception at this point but from my perception someone who was reasonable and I uh, I was getting closer to you know um, seem to closer as in understanding each other seem to shift back, and that's that's what actually made me. I, I don't. If you look at my other videos, I don't actually, I don't actually do that. I don't actually bur- go get into an outburst like that unless th- this is the first time I've actually done something like this to a person, you know, to specifically at someone. 
And that's only because, um, you know, I, we were coming to an understanding first, and then I perceived it, and then I perceived that person becoming a troll or something. But, again, that's my mistake. Well, realize, like, the best trolls are not the ones that are obvious. They're the ones that are not obvious. So be careful who you make friends with, because there are some trolls that will go that far. Yeah, uh, I've been this, me once or twice. I've been sitting on this question since it was first brought up. Uh, what the hell ever happened to Truthful Christian? Uh, I think that dude was just run <laughs> off the YouTube run off because he, he pretty much just said, oh, I'm taking a break from YouTube and just left and no one ever heard a thing from him again. There is another uh, channel called Truthful Christian 3, but I'm almost positive it's just a troll channel because he hasn't uploaded any new videos in months and months, and the ones that he does have uploaded was from Truthful Christian 2's channel. So uh, okay. probably so, troll. So. So kind of like that Venom Fang X mirror channel that popped up after Sean closed down his account at one of those points. Probably so. Sort of. yeah. What was it called? Venom Fang X or something like that? Something along those lines. Yeah, yeah because, because, because Sean gave his channel to Gear Up during the time that he was gone. What happened to Gear Up anyway? He's had, his channel's still up, but he hasn't been online for like a long time. Some people probably just have lives outside of YouTube. So, <laughs> oh, <laughs> shit, I know what's, what's up with that. that? Think about <laughs> us. Those people <laughs> exist. Those people exist. Uh, Damn, I'm. <laughs> makes me feel sad. I, I think he. I, I think he exploded phone. after that whole "you atheists are wicked" video. <laughs> like, <laughs> like, I think I he exploded in the What was that? What was that? So, so somebody tried to. He was was trolling him. Trying to justify abortion, and he exploded saying that uh, all atheists are wicked. And I think that he exploded in a more literal sense into shrapnel. <laughs> like oh, he was man. just so pissed that he just combusted, and metal shards just flew out everywhere. Metal shards, huh? <laughs> Why? Is he metal? I, think that's what, I, I think that's what shra shrapnel is like heated metal shards. Yeah. Well, where the hell's the metal shards? Where did those come from? <laughs> I know, that's what would you... <laughs> I don't know. Uh, that that kind of concerns me. Cast heart? That, that kind of concerns me, you know? It's like, you know, w w where the hell did he get the metal shards from? Why um, did he explode into shrapnel? But that would explain why he's been gone, and it would explain everything if his computer was destroyed in the blast. Well, it's obvious that he's Iron Man. I mean, that's just... No, you know, I have a theory. I, I have a theory. I bet he had like a Mac where the where the module is mostly made of like freaking aluminum, and then when he blew up, it jettisoned all the material <laughs> to the tiny little shards, and embedded itself in Forrest Gump's ass, and that's uh, th that's what really hit him in Nam. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it blow it broke the space time continuum and created a wormhole going back in time and went in Forrest Gump's ass. That's what that's what really bit him in the button Nam. I wow. think so. I mean, he was that pissed. Wow that that's that that's that's awesome, crazy. <laughs> right. That is that 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 is Gary Busey level crazy. <laughs> like that thing from Family Guy. He looks in the mirror. How am I doing, Gary Busey? You're doing great. Good. I'll keep it up then. <laughs> <laughs> oh man. I, I love you, Hippo. I love Gary Busey. <laughs> that is the type of crazy I aspire to. <laughs> what what is insane. Seth smoking when he made that show? Like, he, the Gary Busey, the cartoon when they were doing, making fun of him, he was like, how am I doing, Gary Busey? And it's like a clown with snake-like Medusa <laughs> hair. Say, You're doing great. Good. Um, keep it up, then. I was like, well, I, I want to get drugs from where, from where Seth gets his drugs, because... Whenever he's snorting, smoking, or dropping, it must be wonderful. I want a pound of it. Yeah. I mean, seriously, I, mean, I used to watch him like when he, he was on the, the uh, America's dumbest, uh, Amer America's dumbest criminal. Well, just world's dumbest, excuse me. And uh, and just, just I just love to just sit there and bask in the glory of the wonderfully crazy, insane things he says. <laughs> isn't, it, isn't like Brian the dog supposed to be like a reflection? Of who Seth really is, like his yeah, political views, 
like his personality and all that junk. Yeah, pretty much. As a matter of fact, it's kind of interesting how how Seth MacFarlane can do such a scathing review of himself when when uh, he had um, when he had Quagmire just completely tear into him. You know, I thought that was just incredible because it just showed just how 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 uh, how how, how uh, Seth MacFarlane actually can take himself and take all his uh, faults and, and just lay him out on the carpet like that. Hmm. <laughs> yeah. Did you see the episode where um uh, where Quagmire hated Brian? That's the one I'm talking about. Oh, okay. Yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah. It's yeah, like that's yeah. good. Yeah. That that I was just like, holy crap! You know. <laughs> Oh, oh, the one where Brian sleeps with his transvestite dad. Oh, ah, oh, did not could have gone all day without hearing that. <laughs> yeah, what? and at, like at the end of the episode, Quagmire finds out, beats his ass, and then Brian walks up to the door all bloodied up and stuff. He's like, "Hey, I fucked your dad." Wow, I'm gonna pretend I didn't hear that. Oh yeah, oh yeah, I remember Can't that. Un-hear it's it. like, "Hey, Quagmire." I fucked your dad, and he slammed the door. <laughs> oh, I done awesome. did it, man. I done did it. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Right, um, you can't unhear it, Jacob. <laughs> fuck it's you. ingrained in your mind for all eternity. Hey, or Will, at least fuck you. <laughs> that. Anytime, man. <laughs> you, you know I'm saving this ass for you. Ugh. <laughs> <laughs> uh. Right. Have you been smoking Seth's drugs, or snorting it, or whatever, how, or however he takes them? No, I've been running on crack cocaine for the last three days. No, that's an excuse. I think this is all you. I don't know about you guys, but I've been taking crystal meth. I think your body this. naturally produces halluc- hallucinogenic. Yeah, awesome. yeah, that, that's that's a little bit more accurate. You know, the whole gene therapy thing. There's actually, there's actually a yeah. book I read where like the, the, this uh, this lady had like a body that produced like some sort of hallucinogenic drugs or something like that, and this guy ended up having sex with her. Her skin produces it. I was just like, wow, that is but awesome. Is she, like, is she like a frog? Like some of those frogs you find in South America that have those. It is a it is a book where like I love science fiction and fantasy, and and it's a book where like in the future where like people uh, record their 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 minds, and uh, anytime your body dies, you just get downloaded into a new body, and you can and you have like genetically altered types of bodies where you can where bo- bodies that have special abilities or are secrete various substances. This girl I, had a custom I, made. I saw, I, I saw I saw this weird thing where this. Uh, I forget. I think it's in. Um, I think it's uh, in New York. I think there's this like museum for like weird oddities and stuff. Uh, yeah. I, I it oh, Ripley's, believe it or not, museum. Uh, there's this one woman. She died. Her body. Can-